Hello and welcome back to Lab Cyber. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the cyber attack against Target, which is considered to be one of the largest data breaches in US history. Now, it is believed that over the course of two weeks, starting in November of 2013, hackers had stolen detailed information of about 40 million credit and debit card accounts, as well as the personal information of about 70 million of Target's customers. Now, Target also reported that this particular breach cost them over $200 million in damages. So how exactly did this happen? The Secret Service is investigating a major data breach at Target. Well, we're talking about a big stretch from November 27th, that was right before Thanksgiving, all the way up until just a few days ago, December 15th, meaning that virtually every customer who shops at Target could be a victim. Incredible the amount of time it took between the hack that actually happened and when Target made a statement about it. Do we know why they were asleep at the wheel here? Do you get any sense that Target's learned their lesson? It's hard for us to know. I mean, I, I, I'm very sensitive to the fact that when we came to them with everything we were reporting, you know, they have nearly 100 lawsuits to protect themselves from. There's a limit to what they're going to be able to respond to. Well, the first thing we need to understand about this particular attack was that Target weren't actually attacked directly by the hackers. Instead, they went through a third party known as Fazio Mechanical Services. Now, Fazio Mechanical Services were responsible for providing and servicing Target with refrigeration systems. And as such, they had a remote network connection with Target, which they used for submitting electronic bills, contracts and project management material. Now this particular type of attack where hackers go through a third party is what we now refer to as a supply chain attack. So to carry out their attack against Fragile Mechanical Services, the hackers first sent a phishing email to one of the employees and this phishing email contained a malware that ended up stealing the login credentials of this particular employee. And with these login credentials, the hackers were then able to gain access into the internal network of Target. The unfortunate thing here is that Fragile Mechanical Services actually had an anti-malware software known as Malware Bytes running on the computers. The problem here was that they were using the free version of Malware Bytes which does not provide real-time protection. Now, on a side note, I do use malware bytes. It is an anti-malware I would highly recommend, and it is extremely effective when used in the right manner, which obviously Fudge Mechanical Services did not. Now that the hackers were inside of Target's internal network, they were then able to install another malware known as the RAM Scraper, which basically records unencrypted payment card details while the information is briefly stored in a point of sales device's memory. Now, the information stolen included the card types, expiration dates, magnetic stripe data, names, and contact information. To make things worse for Target is the fact that they were not the first to report this breach, but rather it was a popular blog, Krebs on Security, that reported the breach for the first time December 18th, and on the very next day, December 19th, for the very first time, Target publicly acknowledged that they had indeed been hacked. Now, the fact that Target had kept quiet about this breach and coupled with the scale of the breach led to a huge drop in consumer confidence and many people were unwilling to shop at any one of Target's stores. Now, this of course led to a massive drop in earnings and Target reported that during this period, their earnings dropped by a massive 46%. Now, how did Target actually respond to this breach? Well, I should say that they responded quite effectively. First of all, they removed the malware and informed all of their customers about the breach. They then reassessed their entire digital infrastructure by increasing monitoring and recording of alerts, restricting vendor access, enhanced segmentation of networks, resetting over 445,000 employee and contractor passwords, and finally introducing two-factor authentication. But perhaps the biggest change as a result of this breach came with the mass introduction of the EMV, which stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa Cheap by card issuers. You see, prior to this attack, less than 1% of all American credit cards used the EMV chip. The majority of cards 
used a magnetic stripe that was outdated and ineffective for protection against upcoming security threats. On May 5th of 2014, the Target CEO Greg Steinhafel finally resigned and four years later, Target agreed to pay more than $18.5 million to settle claims by 47 states and the District of Columbia. Now, as I stated earlier in the video, this breach cost Target over $200 million, not just because they had to upgrade their entire security infrastructure, but also because of the loss in consumer confidence. A lot of people simply did not want to shop at Target stores for an extended period of time. Now, in closing, if there is one thing we can learn from this particular attack is that as a company, it is not enough for you to secure your own networks and your own data. You also have to ensure that if there are any third party contractors or companies out there that have any sort of network connection or data connection with your company, you need to ensure that they too have very effective security tools and policies to protect them from attacks from cyber criminals and malware. Because as I stated earlier, Supply chain attacks are where you as a company can be attacked through a third party that might be a lot more vulnerable to attacks than you are. So that was it for today's short documentary on the cyber attack against Target. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, share this video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you're new here to the channel, welcome to Lab Cyber, where I cover topics around the world of cybersecurity. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure presenting to you this very short documentary. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.